Hogwarts Castle, a 5 inch gauge locomotive, part 5. More cleaning and sanding of the wheels, cleaning the front bogey in the parts washer, and cleaning the coupling rods. But before I get round to the jobs that I've just mentioned, I'm rubbing down the JB weld that I applied to the steam cylinder cladding in a previous episode. And I'm really trying to get it as smooth as possible. Any imperfections will be filled with cellulose putty. More about that later. This is one of the counterbalancing plates on the locomotive wheels. On some miniature steam locomotives, the counterbalance is cast in as part of the wheel. But on this locomotive, it isn't. It's two metal plates that are riveted together and then usually the space between the two plates and the spokes is filled in using molten lead. But on this locomotive wheel, it looks like the lead was only poured in between the centre spokes. What I'm doing here is applying some cellulose putty. And once I've applied the cellulose putty, I just wet my finger in some cellulose thinners and smooth it all out. Health and safety warning, do not under any circumstances dip your finger in cellulose thinners or other powerful solvents. I'm only doing it, you understand, for the purpose of the video. I do like to live life on the edge. No bungee jumping or skydiving for me, I just dip my fingers in various solvents. Although, I do tend to avoid sulfuric acid. I think that with a job like this, the way I do it is the best way. Just apply the cellulose putty, wipe off the surplus, and leave what you need in the gaps it's supposed to be filling. I'm doing it this way really though, because I don't want the joint between the metal panel and the rim of the cast iron wheel to be invisible. This should look okay when the wheel is painted. So after I did one side, I did the other side, and this is a centre pair of wheels, and I'm doing the same on these. But to avoid anyone slipping into a coma, I will not show the complete process. Although a bit of excitement, in this clip you can see that there's a drip in the old paint on the centre boss. This will need sanding away. I thought I would take this opportunity to show you my painting jig that I use for painting wheels and things. It's quite simple, yet ingenious. It's made out of three pieces of two by one and it will allow me to paint a wheel set in its entirety in one go. But before I'm ready to paint, I need to make sure that the wheel sets are perfectly clean. Cleaning these wheel sets took a great deal of time, far more time than I show on the video, so I was really pleased when finally I got one pair ready to paint. At this stage I thought it would be a bit of a diversion to turn the chassis around on the bench so I could get at the cylinder at the other side. But I'm not going to do the cylinder at the other side just yet. In this episode, I'm just going to show the cleaning of the front bogey. This is sat in the parts washer and getting washed quite thoroughly with the brush. This brush is pretty good. The only problem with it is it tends to splash the liquid all over me. So for a few hours after doing some parts washing, the sleeve of my jacket tends to smell like the solvent that's used in the parts washer. In this clip, as an experiment, I've removed the brush and I'm just running the solvent onto the component and using my old toothbrush to scrub the parts. And this seems to be a bit better. The solvent is not getting splashed all over the bench and onto my jacket. In this clip, I'm putting the solvent back into the container and then I'll put the cap on the container and store it away. It will probably be a while before I use this parts washer again, so I'm taking this opportunity to give it a wipe over with a cloth. I went up to Blackgate's Engineering to buy some parts that I needed, and I'd like to thank Geoffrey for the gift voucher that he left with Blackgate's Engineering for me. Thank you once again, Geoffrey. That was very kind of you. And while I was there, I also bought a tin of this. Phoenix Paints LMS Crimson Lake Paint. Because I'm seriously considering painting the Stuart Sirius in this colour. But for now, it's back to more cleaning of parts. Oh no, not more cleaning of parts said a voice in my head. I'm using 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper with WD-40 as a lubricant. And there's a health warning. Watching this could seriously affect your mental health. Or maybe it's only affecting mine because I'm doing the job. Anyway, it has to be done. The coupling rods are a very visible part of a steam locomotive. And if they don't look right, then the whole job is spoilt. I do not want to polish these. If you look at connecting rods and coupling rods on full-size steam locomotives, they're a sort of a steely colour. So I find wet or dry sandpaper the best way to go for coupling rods and connecting rods. I could easily use my polishing spindle, but that would round the edges and I don't want to do that. 
the finish at the end of these rods is not particularly good. So I think what I'm going to do is invest in some new equipment to clean up parts like this. And the existing flexible drive motor tool that I have is diabolical. The battery only lasts 15 to 20 minutes at best. So I'm going to abandon that and buy some new ones, I think. So what am I doing here? I sometimes ask myself that question. I'm using some masking tape to fasten the parts back together temporarily, just so I don't get the sides mixed up. You'll be pleased to see that the last section of this video shows me cleaning off the cleaning fluid from the front bogey, which is now quite clean. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.